of the coalition. I'm always listening when Christopher Pine is speaking. Well, Christopher Pine, uh, thank you for joining us. It's a non-sitting week. So tell us, what does a Minister of the Crown do on a non-sitting week? Well, Christina, it's great to be with you, with uh, Ross and you, on our first show together uh, on your new <laughs> Hopefully format. Hopefully the first of many. Mm. I hope so. Uh, Monday, I was uh, on the Labor Day holiday with my two sons, who are 14 and 12, pretending to play golf uh, down at McCracken at uh, Victor Harbour. Uh, all week I've been doing cabinet meetings, uh, media interviews at the Australia India Institute on Wednesday, who I gave $3 million to of taxpayers' money so they can keep doing the good work that they're doing. Uh, yesterday I was uh, addressing uh, 300 Kurds who were protesting outside uh, my electorate office, or really not protesting but supporting uh, the government's uh, efforts in the war in the Middle East and asking us to do even more. Uh, and uh, it's the usual stuff on a Friday. Uh, today's show this morning, uh, your show this afternoon, uh, meetings in my electorate office, uh, visiting constituents and, and talking to people about a hockey pitch. Uh, I'm, the lo I'm still a local member Remember, Christina, as you'd remember from mm -hmm. when you were Premier, you've still got to take care of the people, in your case of Heffron, in my case of Sturt. Christopher, we will be uh, talking about the Kurds a bit more on the show today. Why were the Kurds protesting if they're in support of the position the government has taken? Well, they're very worried about what's happening in Kobani, and they want the Australian government to be able to do everything it can to protect their families and friends. And, of course, we're all worried about the advances of ISIL uh, in Syria. But I have to explain to them that the Australian action is in Iraq, uh, and one day, with the legal position is uh, changed with respect to Syria, we might be able to take action there. But we're relying on the United States, France and Great Britain in that theatre, and we're pulling our weight in the Iraq theatre. Well, Christopher, coming back to your portfolio, I confess to you that I am a sole, a solid gold, you know, supporter of the objectives of the reforms you are trying to introduce, which I regard as amongst the most important in the government. Uh, Christina, as uh, a former American, has likewise seen the benefits of heavy private involvement in the delivery of tertiary education. I'd love you to just to articulate the objectives of the reforms which you are leading as Minister for Education. Well, for the last six years, our universities have been allowed to stagnate. Labor took $6.6 .6 billion out of higher education, reduced the international education market from $19 to $15 billion, and the universities need to be able to get more revenue if they're going to be high quality and maintain their reputation for great research and teaching. Similarly, students want to be able to get the best education possible, and I want more Australians to have the opportunity opportunities for a higher education qualification. So these reforms will mean that universities can place a real value on the courses they offer, be able to invest their extra revenue in great research and good teaching. We're expanding the demand-driven system to associate degrees and diplomas so that first-time university goers, uh, low SES young people, mature age students returning to the universities to improve their skills, will be able to access these sub-bachelor courses and then go on to undergraduate study. So it's about spreading opportunity and it's about ensuring that our universities can compete with the international, particularly the Asian market, which is getting stronger and stronger in all the objective tests. Yeah, we do want this to be a fun segment. We're going to get on to something fun in a moment. But you, do you regret saying that uh, women won't be uh, earning as high as uh, money because they won't be taking courses uh, such as dentistry? Well, I didn't say that, Christina, and uh, that was a <laughs> kind of typical... Am I verbaling Christopher? <laughs> well, I think you are. In fact, to be fair to you, I think the 7.30 report asked me a question which the left and the Twitterverse in particular decided to twist outrageously and pretend I'd said something that I hadn't said. Uh, what I, in fact, said was that the, the vice-chancellors will take into account the incomes that people can earn from the courses that they do. So the idea that nurses and teachers will be charged astronomical fees by 
by vice chancellors is simply not real world when the vice chancellor knows that over time they will not earn as much uh, as say dentists or medical practitioners so therefore the fees will not be the same for those courses and I went on to say that the idea that women were being uh, discriminated against by these reforms which was the question that I was asked on the 730 report was a nonsense because women were very highly represented in teaching and nursing students so in fact uh, some would argue that they were going to be advantaged because they would not be paying as high a fees back over their lifetimes. Okay, well, that serves you right, for Christine, for asking that one. You got you know, Well, you know... You got uh, it back in spades. Uh, yeah, well, we had a plan here, Ross, and you've deviated from it. Speaking of the 730 it. report, mm. Christopher, you are one of the most conspicuous, one might almost say ubiquitous members of the Federal Coalition. Uh, if you were Bob Dylan or Eric Clapton, I would ask you who your influences were <laughs> as a rock star of the Federal Coalition. Uh, who were the philosophical influences in your mind as you moved into a career? in politics. Well, Rosk, I like the um, people who overcame, overcame major disadvantages to, to do very well in public life. So I'm a particular fan of Benjamin Disraeli, for example, who's the one and only uh, Jew to ever be the Prime Minister of Great Britain and was the Prime Minister in the 19th century and took 20 years, I might remind you, to actually become the Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain, 20 years as leader of the Conservative Party. There's still I'm time for you, Christopher. Still time. Um, I think I'm just a... I'm just a backroom boy, soldier. Ross. I'm just a backroom boy. Yeah. I know my place. Uh, well, you know, one of your places recently was at uh, the Vatican in Rome. You represented the Australian government at the canonization of two saints. You are one of the standout uh, Catholic members of the cabinet, so we thought we'd throw a little Catholic quiz your way. You ready for this? I'm ready. I'm ready as I'll ever be. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. So, uh, this is multiple choice, you know, uh, we, we want to be fair here. Uh, first of all, Christopher, who was immaculately conceived, that is, conceived without sin? Was it Mary, Jesus, or Tony Abbott? The immaculate conception was Mary. Uh, very good. That's a trick one. Catholics often get that wrong. <laughs> I do. I had to think about that one. You're very tricky. Okay. Uh, if you die in a state of mortal sin, where does your soul go? Hell? Purgatory or the Australian Senate? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm glad the choice wasn't the New South Wales Legislative Council. I don't think anybody should be sent there. I think there. you've that become a be trade union particular. official. Oh, yeah, isn't that what happened? Oh, Ross, Ross. A CFMEU secretary. Um, okay. I think everyone goes to purgatory. I still believe, as a Jesuit boy, I think that everyone goes to purgatory. It's just that some people are there longer than others. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on to this then. Uh, which of these is a venial sin? Uh, murder? Voting for the Australian Greens or <laughs> telling a little white lie like saying, yes, Joe Hockey, you are doing a good job of selling the budget. <laughs> Such a loaded question, but the answer is C, I believe. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Very good. Uh, now, one more here. Uh, how often does the Catholic Church say at a minimum that you should go to confession? Uh, is it once a week? once a year, or every time you do a deal with the Palmer United Party? <laughs> I think it's every time you do a deal with the Palmer United <laughs> Party. That is, a, that is potentially a sin that needs to be washed away on a regular occurrence. Actually, I do have one last question. You know, the Trinity is three people in one. So tell us, which one of these people is not a member of the Trinity? Uh, is it Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, or Peter Credlin? <sighs> <laughs> Well, uh, Peter Credlin is a Catholic as well, so she won't mind me answering this question correctly and, and singling her out as the, <laughs> the correct answer. Well, uh, glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because you have uh, scored a perfect score there, and that's appropriate for Yay. our education minister. Christopher. As I should. <laughs> Thank you uh, for joining us on Keneally and Cameron. Mm. I am surrounded by the Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. Uh, it's a pleasure <laughs> to have your company, as always, and we hope it will be the first of many such occasions. Thank you. I certainly hope so. Thanks for having me. Mm. Well, you did a good job.